Hey guys, in this video we're going to be breaking down the beginning to letter B in your snare drum solo, max it out. In the first two measures we have dotted quarter notes. Remember that a dotted quarter note gets one and a half beats. In the first measure, the first dotted quarter note covers the one, the te of one, and the downbeat of two. That means that the eighth note takes care of the te of two, and the next dotted quarter note covers three, the te of three, and the downbeat of four. That leaves just one eighth note remaining, the te of four. I like to count the first measure like this. One, te, three, te. You can hear the pitches of the downbeats and the upbeats inside of the dotted quarter notes by the changes of the pitch in my voice. One, te, three, te. The next measure starts with a quarter note, and two eighth notes, one, two, te, and then we have another dotted quarter note. Remember that gets one and a half beats. So in this case, it's three, te. In the next measure, we have some 16th note based rhythms uh, from our 16th note timing three note patterns. We have one, te, ta, two, te, three, te, ta, four, te, one, te, te, two, te, te, three, te, ta, four, te, te, ta, one. Notice that the dynamic marking at the very beginning is piano. We're going to use a three inch wrist stroke. And in the third and the fourth measure, we're gradually crescendoing from piano up to forte. Altogether, those measures sound like this. playing on a snare drum and I'm playing at a piano dynamic, I like to push the beads of my sticks closer to the front edge of the head. It just gets a crisper sound from the snares. And as I get louder with my dynamic, I'm going to move my beads back towards the center of the drum so that my forte dynamic is in the center of the drum. In the next line, we have some eighth note and quarter note based rhythms followed by some eighth note and sixteenth note based rhythms. So the first two at forte dynamic sound like this. So you can kind of see how the first measure is quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, eighth, eighth, and then we play that same pattern twice as fast. Eighth, sixteenth. In the next measure, we have a similar pattern. We have one te, mm te, three te, mm te, and then we play that pattern twice as fast with sixteenth notes and eighth notes. One te, te, three te, te, one te, ta, two te, ta, two te, ta, four te, ta, one. In the next line, we have our first accents of the piece. The accents are the little uh, arrow looking things above the notes. Um, and they mean that we're going to emphasize those notes in comparison to the notes around them. So we're at the forte dynamic. We're just going to make those first three notes of measure nine a little bit louder. Uh, and then right after that on beat three, we have uh, the piano dynamic, which means those next three notes are going to be at a three inch stick height, really soft. So we should use the downstrokes that we've learned um, for these accents so that we're ready to play those next notes soft. The first measure, measure nine, sounds something like this. In the next measure, we jump back up to our, our good forte stick height and we play a 16th note based rhythmic pattern. The next measure, measure nine, uh, is a repeat of measure nine. And then the next measure, uh, we have our even harsher accents, these are uh, rooftop accents. Uh, to emphasize this last 16th note bass rhythm. One, two, ta, two, ta, ta, ta. This is the third and the fourth pattern from our 16th note timing exercise. Remember the left hand is going to rebound through these patterns. Right, left, 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 right, left, right. There are four constant rebound strokes in the left hand in a row. One, two, ta, two, ta, ta, ta. Finally, in that measure before we go to uh, letter B, 
we have a mezzo forte dynamic marking, and we have a little pickup note on the teta of four, teta one, and those will be six inch notes. So if I go A to B all together, it sounds something like this. <laughs> 